no ads, earlier content, ask me questions, and even get a Discord call with me to help with your game. These are all on my Patreon right now. Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of creating a horror game from scratch. I actually recorded this entire episode only for it to not be usable and I am restarting. I think I have the project back to where it was whenever I first started, but if there are minor differences, that would be why. If you remember in the last episode, we started to do the set or the stage for our horror game on our main menu here. And if we hit play, it goes into the game and we got it set up that far. However, the issue being, first off, when Whenever we hit play, you'll know that we're still our character and uh, you can see our hand and obviously we wanted to use this camera over here. Um, so let's get that solved first. Uh, to do that, it's actually really easy. There's a couple ways to go about this, but we're gonna do the easy way. We're gonna go ahead and click on this quick import and we're gonna go down to basic and we're just gonna bring in the player start. Kind of put it over here to the side to make sure that it's not within range of our camera and it isn't, it is way the heck over here. I'm also gonna note that he is facing this direction, my player start. I'm gonna show you why that's important. Yours can face whatever direction you want, but I'm gonna show you why mine's facing that way in a moment. So now when we hit play, we still go to here, which is a problem. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to the level blueprint. If yours isn't already open, it is this little graph looking thing here and then open level blueprint. Within the level blueprint, we are going to create a custom event and we are going to call it set Oh, not camera, but camera rather. We're gonna pull out and you're going to uncheck the context sensitive and you're going to do set view target and you want the set view target with blend. Now go ahead and pull out on the other side and just return on that context sensitivity. The target, we're gonna go ahead and pull out and just type in get player controller. And now what we need to do is head back to our level. Make sure your camera is selected then in the level blueprint print when you right click you'll be able to click on create a reference and that will be the new view target make sure the blend time is set to zero we're going to grab that comment and just say set to correct camera when uh when level loads then we're going to go up to the top here and add it uh before the delay so if you add it to the post delay i'll just show you let's go ahead and just hit set camera and then hit save and compile. So with the post delay, note that you see the hand for a brief moment. Every time I hit play, it pops up. Well, the good news is we don't really care about the load order when it comes to changing the camera. The camera can be changed immediately. We're not waiting on the game instance. We're not waiting on anything. Just go ahead and move it over. So if you hit play, now the hand doesn't pop up and we're on the correct camera. Now, remember how I was making a big deal out of the fact of which way my player start was facing? That's because now I'm gonna hold the W button. Now, if this was set up incorrectly, you'd see me run past the camera. Luckily, we are held in place because we already set that code up and uh, our main menu is almost ready, but it's a bit quiet. Let's fix that. Main menus usually have music, ambience, the buttons usually make noise and stuff, so let's get all that added. In order to do that, we're going to create a, what I call a sound system. So in the systems, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna create a new blueprint class. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it an actor, and I'm gonna call this BP underscore sound system and open that up. Within the sound system for components, we basically just need a component for each type of music or ambience that we want. Obviously you can add more to this, uh, like if you want multiple ambiences going on, positional audio and stuff like that. I recommend different blueprints for positional audio, but you can do it in this one if you really want to. Regardless, I'm gonna add two, and one of them is going to be the BGM or the background music. And then I'm going to add another one and it's going to be the ambience. Now, what we're gonna do with both the ambience and the background music in the details panel is just type in the word auto and you'll see that there's auto activate. On both of these, I'm gonna turn this off. Now, a lot of the times you're gonna notice on event begin play, we're actually going to turn the music or the ambience on immediately, but that's because we're calling it and we're telling it to start it gives me control over it instead of it playing when I don't want it to and things like that. 
I have to tell it to start and that's why we're doing it. It might seem like an extra step, but it's for that extra control. Now, I don't have a lot of sound effects and music I can give you guys for free because most of mine was gotten off of like different sales and stuff on the Unreal Marketplace. But if you are going to go and get free sound effects and music, I recommend Open Game Art. There's all kinds of places you can go, but this is a fantastic website. Uh, just remember when you click on something on the left-hand side, check out the Creative Commons. In this case, it is public domain because it's that CC0. However, just remember anything higher than zero year is usually attribution required and maybe additional steps. So be sure to learn what those are and to double check anytime you get an asset. In any case, we don't need the same sound effects and music in order for this to work. So I'm gonna hit save and compile on this BP sound system and then go to the event graph. We're gonna delete everything but the event begin play. We're gonna create a custom event. And you guys have seen me do this a thousand times. It's going to be called get game instance ref. At this point, you should be able to do it yourself. But just in case, we're going to cast to my game instance. The object is going to be the get the game instance. Out of my game instance, we're gonna to promote to variable and we are simply going to name it game instance ref, just like that. And then out of the event begin play, of course, we are going to get game instance, but we will add that delay. I always forget. Well, I don't forget, it's just, it's always the second step. It's like, it should be the first thing I do, but I always I always forget for like a brief moment. Anyways, comment. Now in the game instance, we're gonna go ahead and create a variable for this. So we're gonna create one more variable and I'm going to name it sound system ref. And the variable type will of course be that BP sound system, just like that as an object reference, save and compile. And we actually, which I believe one of these is called saving and loading level flow ghost interface player. So we don't, let's create another section. I'm gonna create a custom of it and just say add sound system like that. And it's going to require an input, which that variable type will also be the BP sound system. So that way it actually has to come through with it. And we'll just call it sound system and we will simply pull the sound system ref out hit set and plug this in just like that create a comment adding the sound system as a reference save and compile head back to the bp sound system pull out that game instance ref select git go ahead and pull out of that git and type in add sound system just like that sound system will be self we'll create a custom event and it will be alert game instance this stuff should definitely be second nature to you guys at this point if it seems like you're still struggling understanding the concept of what we just did i would highly recommend learning more and more about the game instance all right with that saved and compiled now we can head back to our main menu and what we're gonna do is in every single level, we need to incorporate one of these sound systems. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop the sound system there. It doesn't really matter where it is. I will let you know though, that it's become kind of habit to me to have like an admin room, like something I build with the cube grid real quick and throw all my systems in it. So that way I know where they're at in physical space, even though it typically doesn't matter. It's just like something that I like to do. And now we know this will immediately alert the game instance. Well, it would, but we forgot to add the alert game instance to so pull this out and type in alert game instance on the event begin play. Or I won't say where I did at least, and we'll get that save and compiled. So where do we go ahead and set the ambience and the background music? Well, in this case, I'm actually going to do it in the level blueprint. I think there's better ways to do it depending on the level, but for a main menu, this is a perfectly fine location to do it. Uh, so we're, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna type in custom event. And we are going to name this like set BGM, which I think makes sense. We'll pull out that game instance ref. From the game instance ref, we'll pull out and type in get sound system ref. And now, because we have the game instance ref, we will always have a reference to the sound system as well. From the sound system, we'll type in get BGM and we'll scroll down to get that one with the little blue dot next to it. And now you see we have a direct chain to the background music. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out of the BGM and we're gonna type in set sound, 
just like that. We'll plug that into the custom event we created, and now we can insert a sound. Now, as I said earlier, I've already got a bunch of random stuff in here that I can use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick one of these at random. So we'll go with like, uh, we got hide and seek ghost story. Well, there we go. There are games about ghosts. Let's use the ghost story loop queue. Again, these files might not be available to you, but it doesn't matter what music or sounds you're using, as long as you're following along with some form of music or sound effects. And then after we set the sound, we'll pull out and we will now play the sound. And I'll make some reroute nodes because I don't like that by default going through. So we'll do something like this just so those nodes actually kind of have more straight lines. Something like that, I guess. So then if we go to our event begin play now this, we can type in play BGM or I'm sorry, set BGM, which is what we named it. If we hit save and compile, now what's gonna happen is it will immediately start playing the background music when I hit play. Ooh, nice. Now, something to keep in mind is when I go into this queue here, it might already be set up to loop. Yes, as you can see, it's going through this node here to loop indefinitely. I think there's a better way to do this, but I mean, that works, so I'm not really worried about it. But essentially, just make sure that yours is set to loop. Otherwise, your background music is gonna end and then it just won't play anymore. But if that's what you want, then I guess don't loop it. Now let's add the ambience. So very similar to setting the background music, which we'll create a comment. Set the BGM for the main ah, menu. We'll go ahead and create another custom event. We're gonna do this as set ambience, just like that. Pretty much the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab all these nodes. I'm gonna hit copy and paste. We'll plug it in once we get this set up in a better location. However, if you remember, we need to change this component out. So delete the BGM and instead get ambience, scroll to the bottom, get the one with the blue dot next to it. Plug it into the target, plug it into the reroute node. And obviously we don't want the same music to be playing. So let me go get the import I have for Ambience. This one was Creative Commons 3, by the way, it was on that open game art. Ubik was the person that put that on there. So Ubik, that is the official attribution for him or them or her. All right, with that created, create a comment, set the ambience in menu, and then of course we need to add that to the end of our event begin play. We'll hit save and compile, and you're gonna notice something really strange about this when I hit play. It's clashing really hard. Like, it doesn't sound bad doesn't sound good though either that's because ambience is supposed to be significantly quieter than something like a background soundtrack at least in this case I have I, I would say that that's the case so in the actual ambience queue first off I need to click on this right here and make sure it's set to looping or of course uh, if you could if you want you can also pull out and type in the word looping and set it to endlessly yep like the other one was set up and hit save and compile. But we also need to do the volume multiplier. So here's the thing about ambience. Ambience needs to be really low. So if we did like a 0.15 and we hit save on this, it's gonna sound significantly better. You'll still hear it, but the music will be above it and it will, it will not clash as hard. So let's go hit play and see what that sounds like. See how much better that is? You can still hear the ambience, but the music also has its own presence. And much more frontline presence. Ooh, there we go. All right, and with that set up, there's one last thing I really wanna set up this episode. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift S to make sure everything gets saved, and then I'm gonna close a lot of this. 
And now what we're actually gonna work on is adding sound effects for our buttons. A lot of games, when you click a button, it adds a sound effect. So that way it adds impact and juice. If you don't know what juice is, it's everything that makes something impactful, makes it feel good to do or more realistic. It's, it's kind of a whole jumble of things. If you've never heard the game development talk, in fact, let me grab it. This right here, it's called Juice It or Lose It, a talk by Martin, uh, Jonathan and Petri uh, Pirho, I would imagine. Sorry if I butchered those names. This is basically a talk to explain what juice is and how important it is. And I will give you a very brief window into why juice is so important. I'm actually gonna mute them and I'm gonna leave a comment to this in the description so you guys can actually go watch this if you'd like. But when I hit play, this is with very little juice. This is Pong with very, very little juice. Now to really emphasize what juice is, I'm now going to skip to the end where they add a ton of juice so you can see how crazy it is whenever they actually add a ton of juice. <laughs> uh, now we're gonna enable all the effects, hopefully. Are you ready? <laughs> Huge difference, isn't it? All of that has zero effect on gameplay. It's all mental, it's all feedback, it's juice. So adding sound effects to your buttons is kind of heading in this direction. Obviously this is an extreme example, but still. In order to do that, head over to wherever you stored your main menu and get that open. So just like the music and ambience, I already have my own files. Again, you don't have to use the same ones as me. Um, I'm gonna click on every single one of my buttons, get them all selected by holding shift and clicking through them. Make sure you're grabbing the buttons and not the text, otherwise this will not work. And what we're gonna do is you see that there's a pressed sound. Well, I have a cue already set up called triple accept button cue. So if I plug that in and I hit save and compile, and then I go to the main menu and I hit play, look what happens when I press options. Now, whenever I click it, there's a feedback and it like makes a noise and it's like, oh, okay, we're doing a thing. Now that's not happening on the options menu yet. We will have to add that to the options menu. Uh, and let me show you the best way to go about that, especially if you want them all to have the same sound. What I'm gonna do is under search, I'm gonna type in the word button. I'm gonna click on the top one, go all the way to the bottom, hit control this time instead of shift and click, or I'm sorry, shift still and then click and that will grab everything. Now you'll note on the right hand side, we can't do what we did with the main menu. That's because there's a couple things here that we don't need selected. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold control instead of shift and you're gonna click on every single thing that we've got selected that's not a button. Now, normally, I would have you just click on every individual button instead of going through and deselecting stuff, but you can see how this is much quicker whenever there's this many buttons. Now on the right hand side, we can then go over here to, which by the way, if yours is closed, by the way, I didn't talk about this earlier, just open it up, it's under style. Uh, we're gonna go to press sound, and again, mine is called triple accept button cue, save, and compile, and now our buttons also have sound. and our main menu is looking better and better by the second. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.